Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Kathy, Doug, and Tom. Um, starting off this uh, wonderful panel, my name is Meng Chang from Princeton University and also on the board of the Open Fork Consortium. So, Tom, thank you for doing some of the commercial for the consortium just now. Uh, I will continue that uh, theme and to do more uh, commercial for, uh, for the consortium in a bit. Uh, but uh, what I want to uh, spend the next uh, five, six minutes to talk about is focusing especially on uh, the role that FOG is playing in the R&D in universities, nonprofits, and uh, government uh, funding agencies. So that's what the U and N and G stand for, universities, nonprofits, and government funding agencies. Um, but first of all, perhaps, uh, is just to throw out my personal definition of the word fog. Uh, and there are uh, many other alternative definitions. Uh, some people think fog and edge are synonymous. Uh, I've uh, been using the word edge for many more years. Uh, back uh, in 2008, 2009, I started the Princeton Edge Lab. Uh, but in my mind, there are some uh, subtle differences between edge and fog. And others use the words fog and IoT interchangeably. Uh, in my mind, also, there are some subtle differences. And I believe that a fog is about the continuum from cloud to things, as the title of the panel suggests. It's the C to T continuum. It is not a binary cut. It is not the opposite of cloud. It is really a seamless extension of that through the edge into the things and clients themselves. And also, in my mind, fog is about architecture. And as an architecture, it supports different applications. IoT is a set of very important services and applications. He's got a slide up there with you, some wrong projection. Sorry. Yep. I might have uh, given the wrong definition of fog. Uh, so the projector disagrees with me. Uh, Go ahead. So if you think about TCP IP, the internet architecture, right, that is a statement of who should be doing what at what time scale, how to glue them back together. That's architecture. And web applications would be one set of the many applications sitting on top of the internet architecture. So my, in my mind, IoT is one of the applications that's going to be enabled in part by the fog architecture along with other applications like 5G and cellular or big data with embedded artificial intelligence. So I can keep talking yeah. uh, while we uh, seek help from, uh, from the AV staff here. Uh, well, so that's how I think of the word fog. Right? It is an architecture that tries to distribute communication, control, computation, storage services closer to the end user along this cloud to things C to T continuum. Now, there are many actions in university, nonprofit, and government funding agencies just in the past year. For example, I have the benefit of the slide here. You just have to trust me. Uh, DARPA uh, just started a brand new large scale program called the Dispersive Computing. Uh, Air Force Research Lab started an edge analytics program. NSF, we just had a grand challenge workshop uh, three months ago. Uh, there is an IEEE ACM symposium on edge computing. Uh, there are continuing growing number of IEEE journal special issues, conference panels. For example, uh, IEEE Communications Magazine will run two rounds of special issues. It's a bit too late for you to submit paper to it. Uh, but one is coming out in April, one in August. When we opened the call for magazine-style papers last summer, we thought we'd get maybe 10 submissions. Well, we got about 55 submissions. And after uh, accepting only a small fraction of them, we still have to run two issues. So there is an increasing range of intensified actions. Now, a lot of times I get asked this question, why do I care about fog? Some of you might have that question in your mind as well. Why fog? What is unique advantage of fog. So in my mind, there are four sets of unique advantages. and try to put them into a pronounceable acronym. Again, without the benefit of wonderful Panasonic uh, projector, um, the letters are C, E, 
Uh, I'm not going to CES. Huh? C E A L. Okay. So C for cognition. E is for efficiency. A for agility, and L for latency. Now cognition means that because of the proximity to the actuators and the sensors, and often co-location with the same actual devices, in fog, you are more aware of the ambience and the user needs. Now E is for efficiency. Here I'm referring to the ability to do resource sharing, D to D or D for D. Okay? Device to device and device for device. For example, FireChat by Open Garden is an app that supports D to D. Okay? So when you are cut out from the global internet, but your two phones are kissing each other anyway, they can talk to each other. D4D will be referring to the ability to Uberize idle resources lying around. So when I go to the airport, and the Wi-Fi sucks, the LTE sucks, but I look at myself, I got a phone, I got an iPad, I got a laptop, and I just want to finish uploading that PowerPoint. Why can't the other two devices help me do that with my laptop? That would be an Uberization of idle local resources in D4D. Now, A is for agility, because unlike the boxes, uh, these little objects, and this is already enormously big, I'm talking about the CES style little objects, they often have agile development interfaces. You can have API, you provide SDK to the developers, and you can rapidly prototype. And R is for latency. Latency comes here in two flavors. One, because you have small and almost deterministic latency, you can have a feedback loop. You know, control Theory 101 says you need small, almost deterministic latency in order to have a stable feedback loop in cyber physical system like connected cars. Now secondly, latency comes in because you can do stream mining in edge analytics. You can analyze the data right here, right now. So C-E-A-L, seal, uh, is how I think of the answer to the question, so what's so unique about fog? Now there are many also challenges. One is heterogeneity. Heterogeneity of the platforms, operating system, resources. Two is variability, or one may say volatility. Okay, volatility of availability due to in part mobility. And three is constraints. Bandwidth constraints, battery constraints, all these are challenges, heterogeneous, volatile, constrained. But there's also a saving grace, and that's proximity. Proximity to the sensors and actuators that allow you to roll out new services. So let me conclude here. I think I still have just about a few seconds here. Back to Open Fog Consortium. So this consortium was started uh, with six founding members. So Princeton being the academic one, and then we've got Cisco, Intel, Microsoft, ARM, and Dell. And over the past 14 months, we've grown to about 55 members from 14 sitting on the board of directors of Open Fog Consortium. And this consortium tried to create reference architectures that's open, evangelize the idea with publicity, provide a research article repository. <coughs> so if you go to openfogconsortium.org today, you will see all those features. And in the future, we'll provide education and training material, working with IEEE. We provide internship matching between university and industry members. And we'll go on to test bed and certification process as well. But the key idea is it is open. It puts industry, academia together. And it's a global nonprofit. So we're very proud that this consortium is off to a great start in its first year, we've got a long way to go. But if I look back right, right now to 2005, 2006, when cloud was just about to rise, and now the cloud is descending to be among us. And I know that in five, 10 years' time, when we look back, we will see that the cloud descending and becoming a fog has been a major technical and a business trend between 2016, 2025, and perhaps even beyond. So if you're interested in participating in activities of Open Fog Consortium, please drop any of us related to the consortium a note. We'd love to 
uh, hear from you. Now with that, I have to say thank you to this wonderful projector for giving me a chance to look at you face to face. Yes. Uh, there's no excuse for you to stare over there. There's nothing there. Uh, you got to look at my pathetic face and uh, thank you for your patience. Thank you, Bonnie. Tao's going to be next. Yes. So I think we need to, uh, uh, we need to recognize uh, uh, Mung for uh, bravery under fire here. And I think he did a great job.